Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and we have two problems going on right now. The first is that I just spilled some water on my computer and so, so far we don't, I'm not seeing any problems, but I have a history on this channel of computer problems, sound problems, all kinds of tech problems because I'm 48 years old and I just don't know this stuff as well as some of you young people out there. The other problem we have is that the yard man has shown up. And I need to get this video done because I need, I've need i got something i got to do. So, if you hear something underneath my window that sounds like a tractor, you are hearing a tractor. Okay? All right. So, we've got some market movement going on today. Um, and for XRP, that's a good thing because it's, it's bumped up over 90 cents for about the third or fourth time in the last 24 hours. And that's a good thing. This is when I start getting phone calls from people like my dad, who is the official father of the Digital Asset Investor channel, and they start asking, well, what's going on with this market? What's going on? Well, to be honest, I can't really tie it to anything in particular, but I like what's going on, okay? I like this. Goldman Sachs survey, 60% of clients intend to increase their crypto investments. And then Linda P. Jones says it better than I could say it. The big wave on money has not come into crypto yet. We are early. We have been early, folks. Now, look at this from the BlackRock CEO, Larry Fink. He says that the Russia-Ukraine war to ch is going to trigger a new world order. Now, let's just hope that that's a good new world order instead of a bad new world order. Because we're seeing some bad... And by the way... I'm eating some Chex Mix while I'm doing this video because I love Chex Mix. It's one of my weaknesses, by the way. Okay, moving along. Um, XRP loading. This was from yesterday, okay? So some of these chart people saw something going on before it happened. XRP loading is what we got here. Then Procoin News had, and by the way, ProCoinNews.com is the official sponsor of the Digital Asset Investor Fishing and Hunting Club. I have not been fishing yet this year down there, but I'm going to be going soon. And you will be seeing me catching some largemouth bass on lizards. They like, they like the artificial lizards is what they like down there. Okay. ProCoinNews.com says, I'm not 100% convinced in $100 XRP. I am. ProCoin News is not. But I do believe $20 is not only possible, but soon. How about you? I believe $20 is possible soon. I also believe $100 is possible soon. Who knows? Um, anything can happen in this game, folks, because you've had XRP's price has been held down, in my opinion, intentionally by many forces for so long. Nobody knows how this is going to go crazy when this is finally released. And when the bad guys who have tried to suppress the price finally realize that they've lost and capitulate, then it's game on, folks. Okay, more checks mix. By the way, I wanted to show you this. Many of you have never seen this. These are a few little different little charts that, that were put out. These are from a long time ago. This one's showing like the amount of money in the world, one quadrillion financial. This is like a graphical presentation of that. And this is a, a graphic that was shown a long time ago. And and I'm not saying it's going to get to that price. I'm just saying this is one of the graphics that, um, and this is another one of the graphics from money. But if you believe all the money like I do, then some of these numbers might not be so crazy because I do believe all the money. I'm here for all the money. But let's say it's only 20% of all the money. Well, in that scenario, we're doing pretty good anyway. Okay. Now, I'm not going to play the sound on this. I've got this on mute because I don't know if this is one of those things which is copyrighted or, or could be an issue. Um, so I'm going to let you look at the words because they did the words over this. Watch this. 
the whole global economic and trade have suffered a major blow and did the trust of the US dollar as did the trust as the main res reserve currency the illegitimate freezing of some of the currency reserves of the Bank of Russia marks the end of the reliability of so-called first-class assets in fact the US and the EU have defaulted on their obligations to Russia now everybody knows that financial reserves can simply be stolen and many countries in the immediate future may begin and I'm sure this is what will happen to convert their paper at and digital assets into real reserves of raw materials land food gold now I'm not saying I agree with him that everybody's going to convert all of their stuff but I am saying that because of the uncertain, and I'm, I, look, I'm not agreeing, I'm not saying I agree with Vladimir Putin, I'm just saying, it, when things get scary and, and th people start seeing assets seized and all that, people start, they tend to go to things where um, the, the uh, I guess, the what do they call them, risk assets, gold, silver, paid for land. I mean, that's what I'm going to be focusing on over the next few years is gold, silver, paid for land. Now, what I'm doing right now, I did it today. I, uh, just about every week now, I'm sending more of my um, money into, I don't even call it an investment. I'm putting money for safety reasons into my Glint account so that I can have a certain amount of money that is in spendable gold. I get a Visa and a debit card with my Glint account. And these guys, I love their product so much that they're becoming a sponsor. So I put money into this Glen account and then I can buy gold in the account, in my Glen account. And then I've got this card. It's a debit MasterCard. I can literally, like I showed you a few weeks ago, go to, if I want to go to the Mexican restaurant or if I want to go to the grocery store, I can buy my groceries with gold. Now, in a terrible hyperinflationary type situation, just imagine what that do, does for taking care of my family versus someone that doesn't have that option. It does a lot, I can tell you. Okay, I'll put that link at the top of the description of this video uh, for Glint if you wanted to go if you wanted to go check them out. Now, John Deaton had retweeted a TAIG tweet. Um, TAIG was talking about how the words getting out on Ethereum Ethgate more and more. Indeed, it's very arguable that by working with law firms involved in Ethereum and then by joining Ethereum invested funds as advisors, Clayton and Hinman benefited themselves by giving ETH a free pass and also by damaging a rival. And then he, and then he tweeted this out. It looks to me here, it looks like maybe um, Val, uh, I think this was one of Jimmy Valley's uh, firms, but apparently he is accepting XRP as a landlord. Who knew you could pay rent with a security? Below is another use case of XRP being utilized as a substitute for fiat currency pursuant to the paragraph 26 of the lease the landlord is to be paid in XRP. Well, look at that, Gary. All right. Now, um, I saw this earlier today. I was watching BitBoy. I don't watch much of any channels, but I, I just happened to see that he was live. And I was watching him and he started talking about Ethgate. Okay. Stefan Huber saw it and he tweeted this out. Have you heard the new BitBoy crypto BitBoy video? On it is a quote from BitBoy. Honestly, we don't want to go too much into the politics behind Ethereum. People care if the price goes up. In other words, he just wants to talk about the price going up or down. He's not interested in anything that's happened before now. Even if it has completely turned the entire market into a lie, which is what it is. They gave Bitcoin, in, in other words, all these powerful people went behind the scenes, intentionally gave Bitcoin and Ethereum a free pass so that they can bring them out from under securities laws, put all of the rest of digital assets into a purgatory. And now they're having people like Bit, I'm not saying BitBoy works for anybody, I'm not saying that at all. But now BitBoy, guys like BitBoy, instead of calling out these powers uh, and, and calling out what they did for the sake of all crypto, not just Bitcoin and Ethereum, he said, oh, well, that doesn't matter. Then he says, people care if the price goes up. If, if JP Morgan is behind it, fine by me. Even though I hate JP Morgan, that, that ETHgate thing, I cannot judge. The ICO was, a long, was long ago. So 
If, in other words, I didn't, if, oh, if, there's, if there was money laundering, fraud, all kinds of, I don't care about that stuff. As long as the price goes up now. Really? Is that, is that where you want to be, BitBoy? I said, yep, the party completely overlooks is that the entire premise of the Hinman speech was Ethereum being decentralized. If you, if, if you show who the disguised whales were, then all of a sudden you might find out it wasn't de decentralized. That is what the Bitcoin and Ethereum people have been hitting Ripple over the head with for years. And it's the, the whole premise of getting Bit uh, Ethereum out from under securities laws is that it was decentralized. If you show the hidden whales, all of a sudden you find out, wait, it wasn't decentralized. The whole market has been built on a lie is the point. But that doesn't matter to BitBoy, I guess. And I said not to mention potential money laundering or IRS issues of hiding whales. It's not just politics. He's a thousand percent wrong on that. And here's something else he's wrong on. In very bad ways. Yep. Uh, especially a lot of the bigger ones. The, I'll be honest with you. The way the XRP token sale went. The only reason they're going to get out. of There was no XRP token sale. And the security is because of Ethereum before it, and because of what William Henman said, and because of the fair notice. The mismanagement <clears throat> of the SEC, really. That, That's not even correct. Stefan Huber says, are you kidding me? The uh, He says, the only guidance the SEC ever gave was that ICOs are illegal, and that the blockchain has already, bi has already been built. XRP had no ICO, and it was built. So... I don't know where he's coming from there. And I like I like BitBoy. I think I think he's entertaining, but on this one, he's just flat wrong. Uh, Wrath of Common, this may be the most positive Ripple article seen in the American banker in some time. Um, right here it says Ripple didn't have these tentacles, but is now gaining them. I guess they're saying tentacles of merchant connections. Pretty interesting stuff. Um, then we've got this from James Philan. Ripple's request for extra time regarding the redacted documents was granted in a text-only order. The SEC is directed to produce the redacted documents for defendants' assessment by March 30th, 2022. Defendants' response is due April 4th, 2022. So they're directed to produce redacted documents. Which documents are those? That's what I want to know. Now, Elizabeth Warren, who is terrible, says, I have long called for a wealth tax to ensure billionaires pay their fair share just like everyone else. I'm glad POTUS proposed a billionaire tax in the budgets, ensuring the ultra-rich pay taxes on their income and raising critical revenue to invest in our economic security. And I said anyone, and I mean anyone, supporting an unrealized capital gains tax on anyone, billionaires would only be their entry point not only needs to be voted out, they don't ever need to be anywhere near Washington, D.C. again. This is a path to intentional communism. In other words, they don't need to be near Washington, D.C. because they are communists disguised as Democrats or whatever they're disguised as. Because this is a road to something really evil in this country. Anthony Pompliano, I'll tell you when I agree with him, and this is one of the times, taxing Unrealized gains in America would mean that every individual cit citizen would have to pay taxes on the appreciation of their home each year. Okay, now the people proposing this bill, they'd say, no, 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 you're wrong, you're wrong. This is only for billionaires. No, that's just how they get their foot in the door. Once they do it to billionaires, then they have a world uh, in which we all live then where, oh, well, they accepted unrealized capital gains for them and then it'll be a slow drip, drip, drip until it gets down to all of us. That is how these people operate. This is intentional. And look at this. Imagine, he says, the, the average new home in America is now $500,000. Real estate is up 20% over the last 12 months. This would mean that, a 40%, uh, that, that at 40% tax rate, the average citizen would owe an additional $40,000 in taxes per year. This is never going to happen in or or every politician will be voted out. I hope he's right, but we live in a real sick world now. And and when I, my experience with all these people is once you hear them throw the phrase out there, then it's just a ticking time bomb before we have to deal with what they're talking about. But this right here, 
do not ignore this. I don't care who you are. I don't care how old you are. I don't care if you're old or young or whatever. This will destroy your country right here. This will destroy your country because they will then be able to crush any market. They could crush any market. And, and, and it could happen. Uh, this, the domino effects of this could be unbelievably bad. Just imagine if, if all of a sudden, let, let's just, just take a company. Let's say you're a Facebook shareholder. And all of a sudden, these billionaires, they want to hurt. Facebook, let's say Mark Zuckerberg has, has um, let's say Facebook went up 50% in a year. I don't know what it did, but let's say it did. And then Mark Zuckerberg all of a sudden is in a position where he has to sell tons of his Facebook stock because he's got to pay gains on something he hasn't even sold yet. So now he does have to sell it. Well, what's going to happen to that Facebook tax? What's going to happen to that Facebook stock price when Mark Zuckerberg, when it's in the newspaper, Wall Street Journal, that he just had, he just sold a ton of it. What's going to happen to the price of that stock? See how it fizzles down? It's going to affect all of you that own Facebook stock. This is evil what they're talking about, folks. Don't anybody go for this. It's pure evil. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family that Elizabeth Warren doesn't know what in the hell she's talking about. This is pure evil. They, well, actually, I take that back. I think she does know what she's talking about, and that's what's even scarier.